Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Falcons Web TV. I am your host, uh, Damon Markowitz, once again joined by Falcons President and General Manager, Mr. Bruce Landon. Bruce, another week. Welcome. Another week. Here we go again, Damon. In our new location this week. We <laughs> moved it from our, uh, our conference room on our office side to now we're in the players' locker room. This is probably the quietest time to, to be in here. A very empty, quiet locker room. You're right. Yeah. It is, yeah. We just had the Booster Club in here the other day and uh, moved the interview here this week. And right now there's no stalls set up. It's pretty much all uh, bare until October. Uh, but that's what you have an off-season for to regroup. And, uh, yeah. uh, as before we get started, once again, just want to remind everyone uh, about our social media outlets. Uh, please check out our Facebook page. Please check out our Twitter page. Easiest way to find those, go to falconsahl.com. You'll see a link on the bottom. You'll see a big F, a big T. Big F for Facebook, big T for Twitter. Uh, Stephen Hanjack doing a great job updating the Twitter page on a daily basis. Still doing our weekly chats on Facebook. Uh, had some recommendations there. We've been doing them. Uh, at lunchtime, I think we're going to move some into the later in the afternoon and early evening as well. So we'll accommodate those as we as we move along. But we're doing them every day, so uh, there's plenty of an opportunity there to uh, to jump online, offer your feedback, and uh, that feedback leads us to this agenda that we come into today. We'll take all all of the topics that we have during the week, set an agenda, and sit down with Bruce to get his uh, feedback on that as well. So appreciate everyone joining us there. And before we get into the agenda and the topics, I want to just bring up. Uh, May 5th, and a very important date uh, in this franchise's history. May 5th was yesterday, uh, but May 5th, 1994. Oh, hey. Uh, happy anniversary. <laughs> You're throwing a little curveball at yeah, me. Exactly. Right? Uh, <laughs> testing me here. Uh, yeah, May 5th, 1994, when uh, my former partner, Wayne LaChance, and myself uh, put a group together and officially got uh, the franchise, the expansion, if you will, which still to this day sounds funny, an expansion franchise since there's been hockey since 1936 here, but... Uh, we had to apply for an expansion franchise, formed a company called Pro Friends Inc. back then, and uh, Wayne and I and uh, the Brid, Don, Don and Judy Bridge, and uh, Lyman Wood and uh, a couple other people. We just had to put something together, and it was a historic day to keep hockey here alive in Springfield way back, you're right, 1994. Can you believe it's been 17 years? No, no, it, it's hard to believe. Uh, you know, we've had some good years and some bad years, and uh, sometimes all the years run together. But it's uh, it's been a good uh, sort of a fun run, a lot of different ways, and uh, in some ways it has not been so much fun. But uh, my big thanks as always to the group back in 1994 that uh, came together with me to make sure we kept hockey here in Springfield. First note uh, on the agenda I wanted to get through. It's something that I know you haven't seen yet. I've uh, been dealing with it here for a couple weeks. Uh, Seth, who's on our Facebook uh, quite a bit, and appreciate all. Of, all his followers, all his feedback, and he's come up with a unique idea. And, okay. and I've got to pitch the idea here. Uh, obviously, with the, the big rivalry between Springfield, Hartford, uh, the Wolfpack slash Whale, and the Falcons, a great rivalry that's been going on for, I think, at least 15, 16 yeah. years now. Uh, he's come up with an idea to, to kind of settle the score amongst the fans <laughs> to do a preliminary hockey game here between Springfield fans oh, and Hartford fans. Fans versus fans. It's a great idea. I mean, that's something that's the great the beauty of doing these things when you get a chance to let people sort of been on the organization a little bit and, and sort of, you know, throw some ideas out there. Uh, it might be interesting to see how you do the uh, the tryouts, the, who gets a chance to play and who doesn't, and what age groups, is there is there hitting or no hitting. Uh, there, but it's a great idea, and it's something certainly uh, perhaps as we get closer to the start of next season, we should uh, maybe get together with somebody in the, down in their office in Connecticut and uh, – uh, or how it's coordinated between the, the various fans in Connecticut and fans here and, and our fans would be interesting. But that has a lot of merit. Uh, it might get a little ugly, uh, you know, so we've got to be careful, maybe police it properly and make sure we have officials. But uh, congratulations, Seth. Great idea. And uh, as we try to do on all these things when we talk about it, we, we just don't throw it in the trash. If it's an idea that we like, uh, we'll remember it and try to put it together for next year. Can't always say we're going to pull it off, as you know, because you know, coming up with ideas is one thing, being able to actually execute and implement them. Sometimes you run into roadblocks you're not aware of, but certainly a good idea. And this is something here, Bruce, that it's gained so much legs. There's actually another Facebook page that's created, that's linked to ours, that is basically promoting this game uh -huh. and getting, pe getting <laughs> yeah. recruiting people right. as far as needing goalies, defensemen. Uh, certainly something, all of Great. our preliminary games, and something that we have to touch upon. And I haven't replied back to Seth yet. To do this, obviously there, there's certain elements to pull off a preliminary game right. here because of expenses here at the Mass Mutual Center. Usually there's a ticket element tied to all these oh, things. Oh, there's always a ticket element tied to everything we have, we do. We have to. We And, you know, as you said, Damon, we have expenses to open up the doors early here. And, you know, for the Zamboni and referees and all those kind of things. So we always tie a, a minimal ticket requirement, as, as they do down in Connecticut and Providence and Worcester and all these places when they have these preliminary games. So this is something unique, getting the fans from two cities involved. Uh, 
it'll certainly get some publicity around the American Hockey League, I think, as well. And I think I think it's a great idea. And I think it's something we, as a staff here in Springfield, have to make sure we follow up on and see if we can pull it together. And Seth, we promise we'll keep uh, keep in touch. Be something we probably update weekly here, the way it's going, uh, just to see how uh, how the numbers are growing. Right. But something that definitely is in the hopper, and uh, I promise to follow in and follow up on my end as well. And certainly we can put together. Schedule comes out in August, so I think that's. Probably the biggest hurdle here is just finding out a date that may work. One thing, just quickly, we have to make sure we keep it fans uh, because, you know, in, in down in Hartford, they have some former players living right. down there. But we have some former players living up here that are, are, are good fans too. So we want to make sure we keep it fans and, and sort of set the criteria as who qualifies to play in this game and who doesn't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, those are some of the details. Uh, this is something that's really about a week old now. <laughs> and I have a feeling it'll keep growing because it keeps uh, – it's, it's, Going and checking over the last couple of days, it's been most of the, the posts have been related to this, uh, this idea and topic. So great idea, unique idea. It's all part of the reason we do the chats and something we'll definitely follow through with as well. So uh, once again, Damon Marquis joined by Bruce Landon here, another edition of Falcons Web TV. Don't forget to check out the social media outlets that we're, we're going to have here with the Twitter and the Facebooks and uh, look at our official Facebook page, Lincoln from FalconsAHL.com. Our official Twitter page, also linked from FalconsAHL.com. Everything is updated daily, uh, except maybe the weekends. We may take a Saturday and Sunday off here and there, but uh, although Twitter doesn't, Twitter still got posts there every day. So check that out uh, on a daily basis. And next topic I want to get into, uh, Larry and Bonnie McDonald, uh, longtime fans, right. yes. uh, sent me an email here. Uh, i got to get them on Facebook and Twitter. They didn't have access. I'm going to have to kind of walk them through that, so they sent me an email. Uh, last week we talked about Columbus, or us going to Columbus for a regular season game. Right. Uh, they've turned that around, and would Columbus ever consider doing a preseason game here? At you know, Minnesota? it's a great question, and uh, we have had discussions, uh, I should say I've had discussions with Scott Howes and the general manager of Columbus about that. Uh, the only issue, and again, it will not happen this coming September, uh, the reason being is these things are planned so far out in advance. The NHL uh, start really working well in advance on their, on their preseason schedule. Uh, their preseason schedule is already set for next year. Uh, the other thing is becomes a major is becomes an expense. Um, you know, you would have to the numbers to host a game of the numbers as far as financially that the NHL teams look is usually in the hundred thousand dollar range uh, because they use their home preseason games as an opportunity to raise capital to raise revenue to help offset some of their expenses. Obviously, so uh, we'd have to work out a deal that we could make it work financially here in Springfield to make it worth their while to come in here and play a game, but. It's something I did have, at the same time, I was having discussions with Scott Housen and Mike Priest, the president of the Blue Jackets, about potentially us taking a game down to Columbus, as a number of teams in our league are doing. We touched on this last week. Uh, we did talk briefly about uh, a preseason game with Columbus coming here, and it's something we've talked about. Uh, but it, it's going to be down the road a little bit if it does happen, but it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility, uh, assuming we extend the affiliation deal beyond next year with Columbus, and, uh, which I certainly hope we do. And that was another question. I'm glad you brought that up about the long-term uh, uh, affiliation here. It's obviously, we've gone through a few affiliates over the last five, right. six years. Um, what are kind of the plans? I know you've teased a little bit about it, but what are, are the plans with Columbus? And are they happy with, with the, the, the crew that we have here in Springfield? Columbus is uh, very, very happy. I mean, I can't, uh, I can't say it loudly enough and strongly enough how happy Columbus is being here. They love our facility. They love our fan base, the, the passion our fans have. Uh, they love our travel schedule. They like our organization. Uh, they we're pretty buttoned down, despite what some other people might think. Uh, we know we do a pretty good job in a lot of areas, and we take uh, good care of the Columbus players. Uh, we do all the little things. Uh, you just picking up players at the airport, where they're not taking taxis, especially the players the first time into the city. So all the little things we do are very important to Columbus. But the major things, the facility and our travel schedule and our, our practice time that we have, are very important to the Blue Jackets. Uh, Mike Priest, their president, came in, spent a few days here. Uh, was just blown away by our operation and uh, like I said the way we pay attention to details that helps them so yeah we have a great relationship uh, you know uh, we always have to sit and wait and see what unfolds uh, you know we have next year to go certainly with Columbus and when Charlie uh, bought the franchise and we had several discussions about affiliations you know one thing he thought it was important that we, we sort of got some stability uh, not with just ownership certainly but also we got some stability with regards to our NHL partner. Uh, but again, we didn't make the playoffs uh, this past year. Uh, we had a pretty good year except for that 12-game losing streak that took us out of the, the running of the playoffs. And I think it's important that we keep the, keep the message in front of Columbus that we need to have a competitive team. Our fans deserve it, certainly deserve it. Our ownership deserves it. Uh, 
and, and we need to have a competitive team. So before we start making any long-term plans, uh, we'll wait till this next season unfolds 